when you fall on the side of the majority, it's time to pause and reflect. That's a Mark Twain quote. Mm. And that is something I often think about um, in thinking about ideas. And it's clear that quote applies here. And so I wonder, let's think about the minority that is doing well and is making prosperous, intelligent decisions um, using this information. Wow. How are they, where are they making those decisions? When do they make those decisions? And what character do they generally have to help them be financially and fiscally wealthy amongst the scope of all this? I hope that makes sense. I'm trying to pass out the question. It's difficult. Yeah, no, I, I think I know where you're going with this. And the originator of socioeconomic theory, Robert Prechter, in one of his books talks about, uh, he has an anecdote where he tells a story about traders that he knows personally who make a living trading the market. And he talks about the traits that set them apart from exactly. everybody else. Yeah. What makes these people unique? Yeah. And the first thing to understand is that people who trade for a living over decades, I'm not talking about someone who gets into it for six months or a year, people who for decades are able to trade financial instruments for a living. One thing that you find is it's a tiny number of people, minuscule, minuscule, minuscule. And Prechter points out that of the tiny number of this small, small number, he finds an overwhelming amount, amount of them. It was either all of them or nearly all of them had a military background. And he thinks that it's, what's important is not that they served in the military. What's important is that they have an instilled discipline in them in their decision-making process. So having an ability to act and uh, adapt in a systematic way that you can stick to over time seems to be important. And he's proxying that would maybe the discipline uh, that someone who had served in the military for a while might have. I, I, think, I think they were all Marines, if I'm remembering the story right. Um, the, the other trait uh, that you find often, uh, at least that the practice writes about, um, is that not only do they have discipline, but they had a specific decision-making protocol. And this is the irony of, of being a successful trader is that you have to have, or it helps, it seems to help to have a routinized way of making decisions having a trading plan that is describable. Not like, oh, I kind of feel like I get in and get out over here, um, but to have parameters around your trading that are successful. That's incredibly difficult to generate, but it's also the easiest part of the process because the third part is the hardest of all. And it's an ability to overcome your innate desire to join the herd. Yes. This is the most challenging because we are biological creatures. We are social creatures. And when you are in the minority, remember we saw that chart where at a, at a significant low, there are only 2% bulls. This is at the best buying opportunity of the past 11 years. Only 2% of traders were optimistic on the market. When you're in a minority that is so tiny, and you're talking about money, something that's rather consequential. Oh my, the emotional turmoil that your body is going to generate in that moment of making the decision is powerful. And so to have the discipline and the fortitude to stand up to that and use your rational mind to overcome this non-rational feeling of peak despair is so tough, uh, but people who are able to do it in, in, in the opposite at a major peak, you know, to, to, to anticipate a downside when everyone else is just overwhelmingly confident. Like we saw in that example from the oil market where we had all these books saying, oh, prices are gonna go to the moon, they're gonna keep going up. But you looked at it from an Elliott Wave perspective and said, actually, it looks like the opportunity might be in the other direction. It's one thing to look at it on a chart it's another thing to rewind to that time period and put yourself in a yeah and feel it making yeah. the, making that call exactly 
totally different. And so it's, it's that part. It's really the mindset part that can be the most challenging. I think, okay, you've, you've, that is so uh, well articulated. And I think you've articulated the clear differences in the disposition and character between the wealthiest traders and the ones who are not as successful. And you have an operating system of how you make decisions and you have uh, like a strong relationship with understanding when to fall away or step away from the crowd. And I think it makes sense, right? Because survival would, our survival instincts is like, we got to be with the crowd. We got to be with the group because so we can survive and prosper and procreate and all that. That makes sense. And then there's this quote by Ray Dalio that I just pulled up here. And he said something that just reinforced like Ray Dalio, this, this incredible entrepreneur, businessman, investor, what's common produces only common results. Don't mm. judge anything that's good based on whether it's common because it's only going to give you common results. 